Hey there guys, I'm Dengs564 and this continues for our let's play of Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous and um, yeah, I had to like get into here off screen because for some reason it wasn't loading with what's his face, the assassin. The game wasn't loading this area for some reason. Oh. What is that? There are the dead people it. all over the place. It happens sometimes. Judging by the borough from by the borough's form, it was dug by an incredibly huge purple worm. Oh, it's one of those things, huh? Hmm. How about we save? This war must end. Yeah, we'll also need to reapply her item again. It's so annoying. I wonder, do we need anything else for to find that worm? Because I don't remember exactly what they are. I remember them from Kingmaker, but I don't think they have anything in particular. Oh, and also this thing, we were being, we we're working on it. It's probably I'll just sell it because it doesn't seem that useful when we're finished. Okay. Now, let's go see where the brother of that guy is. They're all dead. Wait, what's that? Do you hear that sound? Yep. That's the one. Do not leave. Do not waver. Let me see. Okay, AC forty four. Neutral magical beast. Hmm. Okay. What are his? Oh, he has pretty bad will roof uh, save. Okay. I think we can work I with that. Resist. No. Okay. Let's let's do this. Good. It has 400, well, now it has 383 uh, hit points, which is nice. See what? Uh, how about charge? Horse, can you charge? No. Do you need to definitely re reduce his AC? What's his attack, by the way? I'll cut you wide open! I uh, mean, offense. 29. Ooh. It is pretty bad, but it's not awful. I wonder if it's the only one here. There are probably more of them. Let's reduce his AC. That's fine. Uh, we'll probably need to get closer, actually. Oh, uh, we'll save him because of success? Really? Well, he rolled 13. He needs to roll 9 to. Well, it's a little bit less than 50 50. So it's like 45% chance to see he fails. So that's not that bad. What? Wait, where's the horse? Did he 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 ate it? Okay, that might be a problem. <laughs> that might be a little bit of a problem. Um attack. Yeah, okay. Uh, not cool. <laughs> Bad worm. Uh, okay, uh, how about... Which, what does the resist from this does? Hmm. So, to intelligence, charisma, wisdom, no. Constitution, maybe not. Attack rolls, saves, ability checks, skill checks. Maybe. Balance strength and dexterity. How about this one? Is that a will save? Yes, it's a will save. But he needs to roll 14, so... Uh, so... Did you succeed? Just Curse of Weakness. There were no... Boom, boom, boom. Prepare yourself. Nothing here. 
Did you spend your ability? I don't know. Okay, let's shoot. 37 is not that bad, right? Desna, guide my hand. How much do you need to hit? Is it 37? You need... You need 10 to hit, right? And you uh, didn't... Oh, you need 7 to hit, but... Okay, um... Okay. That was disappointing, not gonna lie. Good. Alright, oh, what's your bonus for eating? Wait, I um Oh right, 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 right. I, I exchanged the uh, caster. Uh not caster, changed the party member, so that's why her food is gone. Oof, okay. The inheritor guide my blade. Amelia. Does he still suffer from yes he does, right? It's still his AC is still 37. So why don't we do attack failure? It should work. Is it flawed? And chant. He, he ate her as well. I thought it, like maybe he can only eat one person. That that is uh Aim carefully. That is bad. That is very very bad. Yes, we spent it, but nothing came out of it. Well, shit. And there wasn't even a role, like, to save. Is he immune to it or something? Um. Oh, oh, okay, I see. Now you can do it, right? No. What? Wait. What? Fall! I don't know. Something, something. Not, not right. I will bring down the divine wrath. Okay, whatever. Let's let's do something else then. Cannot banish it. Constricting coils it? Is it? Will negate. Okay. Oh, come on. Really? What's up with your safe throws? God damn it. Make your peace. We really need you to hit. That's 15... Damage reduction? Uh, everything yes. against the Demantine. Okay. Uh, go, go. Mm -hmm. So only person who actually uh, does any damage so far is her, I think. Okay, we need to reduce his um, saving throws as well. Yes. Okay. Okay, he didn't he didn't eat Agler. Oh, that's that's good. So Okay, just attack him, I guess. Do we need to roll 24 to hit him? Like why is that? No, no, okay. Why is his armor class 39 now, that's all of a sudden? Dexterity bonus plus 4, 3. I don't know. It was 37 just a second ago. He 
July is still there. What changed? Does his natural armor increase if he eats something? Maybe that's the case, I don't know. Can we constrict in coils one again once again? No. Hmm. No, that's not an evil creature. I feel cheated. You know, that's against undead. Because... That curse would have worked so good. What else can you do? Remove curse? Nope. Well, let's try to apply this curse, I guess. No, that's good. Strength and dexterity. Okay. Something over there. So, did you do it? What the hell? Wait, what? What is happening? It, it didn't work as well. God damn it. I will resist. Okay. Seventy four hit points. Cool. Chant and is there any offensive spells that we can do here? Oh yes, we can we can do this. Oh, it's a very very big area of effect. Mm. Flame strike would be good though. Oh, Aglar is has been swallowed. Okay, curse of weakness. He oh, I see, but. I still needed to get close to him to to do the okay. Prepare yourself. Ember. Am I doing it wrong? What? Oh, I missed probably the, the, the guy. Go, go. The monster is dead, whooping the sweat from his face. Also, he looks over at the battlefield. The Ex departors, the enemy. This enemy must have been more than they could manage. The cleric folds his hands in a short funeral funeral prayer. Do you see your brother among them? No, he's not. I don't see him among these people. The relief is palpable in the young cleric's voice. What can you say about the bodies? They died not died not so long ago, judging by the wound wounds. They were killed by the same beast we just dispatched. Looks like the imposter sent us into a trap. Yes, it looks like it. Let's return to the to Dresden and So Seal clenches his fist. Oh Shailene, help me endure this. This entire story, you know, I don't recognize myself. I serve the goddess of love, but the Hell Knight I Hell Knights, I hate them. I really do. It's sickening, but I don't know how to get rid of this feeling. Why do you hell hate do you hate hell, hell knights so much? The fact that we even tolerate them is disgrace to the entire crusade movement. Cruel tormentors who are indifferent to the suffering of others, or perhaps even enjoy it. What are they doing on our side? Why do we let them justify all these atrocities by particip uh, participating in the crusade? What does your face say about it? It's a temptation, and I must overcome it. Their cruelty steers an indignation in me. I'd like to believe it's righteous, but they also call their sp spite righteous anger. I shouldn't be like them. I shouldn't answer evil with evil, but goddess, it's so hard. You really haven't been yourself since the imposter showed up. 
The things he said about my brother. Uh, I admit, I want to grab him by the throat and squeeze so hard his spine cracks. It, it is uh, a dirty, unworthy desire, but I can't get rid of it. And worse, I think the reason I'm so angry is because I'm afraid, I'm afraid he's telling the truth. Tila looks at Social with sympathy. Hold on, brother. If you need to talk and drink and forget everything, or how your grief at the moon, come to me. I'll support you. War is hard on good people. But this war isn't hard on you, Sila. What does that mean? It means I'm a paladin, dammit. <laughs> One of the many swords of, the, of gods, forged and honed specifically for war against those who want to see good people suffer. That is what makes us different from healers, uh, healer cl clerics. And from nuisances like you, kiddo. No, let's go, we have to talk to the imposter again. He nods and without saying a word. But we do we, before we do so, let's uh, let's inspect all what? Oh there's another trap. Ooh, nice. Ring of perception, wand of light, cure light wounds. Oak living flames. The next round uh, wait, come on. Remember the wearer of this cloak to challenge energy to harm and death. For the next two rounds, they become surrounded with fire sh uh, fire shield that deals 1d6 plus f character level for damage to the attackers for each successful melee. What? That's not good. Whenever the wearer of this cloak channels energy to harm undead for the next two rounds, the undead become surrounded or the character no it says they so the, the undead 1d6 to to the attackers what like this this is kind of bad because if we're attacking undead unless i'm an undead creature or what but what Why? <laughs> like that's that's the, that's the question I have. A solid plan. All right. Okay then. I hear the you. voice of the spirits. Go disable that trap. Somebody decided to booby trap that flail. It must I be good helpful. then. Am I not? No, it's not. It's a, and it's a maze. The spirits guide me. Okay. I hope you appreciate this. I'm gone. Is that all? Is that all there is to this area? Maybe I uh, know I cannot go there. Uh, I can oh, go through here though. I sense something. Oh, what do we have here? We won't fall here. I swear it. <laughs> of cure, cure moderate wounds and some sort of a dagger. We have Runner's Greater Shadow. Great. Um. AC thirty six. He probably does. Uh, my hand. Yeah, touch damage. He, he drains levels. Hmm. Who had death? Ward? She had death ward, didn't she? Can we kill him before he moves? Make your peace. Well, let's uh, do this. Do we have true sight here on her? I don't remember. Well, let's 
Well, let's just attack it then. The spirits demand your blood. Or not. Do you have some sort of a turn undead or something like that? Yes, we do have this against undead. The spell slays 1d4. North of undead creatures per caster level. Oh, Philstrom, oh, come on. That was bad. Five strength, are you kidding me? Well, let's put a death ward on you, shall we? Okay. Stay in this target. And attack. All right. I for constantly forget about his I goddamn sword. Into the fray. You are today's sacrifice. Right, Eternal then just attack. Rose, I call upon you. Um, I don't think I need to like do much here. You know what? Let's do sonic damage too. I need to switch the weapon. All right. Aim carefully. Prepare yourself. Okay. And we need to do some lesser restorations. Do we have like lesser one? Or that's the regular one. Let's do just lesser ones. Because it should be enough. And come on. We have still three more, right? Okay, that's it. Uh, what did we pick up? I kind of forgot. Uh, newest to oldest. So, cure light murder wounds. Okay, that's not bad. And just uh, de the dagger plus one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, put the cure moderate ones in here. Okay then. Let's save. Continue forward. What is this path lead? Oh, just to the exit? Okay. Well, let's go then. Now, what I thought I would do is go to the this desolate hovel because I do need this for on wings of hope and that means if it's a mythic quest I will advance in my mythic level right but at the same time maybe I should like visit this areas here because well I'm I'm here and it's, this is quite far away anyways and then visit Ravage Longhouse, maybe, and then go back to the town. And we come back to here after we visit the town, maybe. I think that's a better idea, right? Because what was the uh, ETA on that outpost? Okay, two. What do we have here? Well, Parade, Glory to the Heroes. What does Glory to the Heroes do? Oh, Crusade Morale increases. I don't think we need that. I really hope that this is the area that I'm currently in, that I'm upgrading. Probably not, though. Because if it was, I could upgrade this one into the Citadel and make it uh, build a... what do you call it? Build a partition circle there? That would have been nice. Okay, but let's just visit all these areas here. If nothing else, I can probably just... Okay, collect. I can just take um, wait. Do I want to enter? Probably before that. I what? What do we have here? Vents. 
the end of the world, priests of various faith are asking commander to banish the followers of a small sect that believes in the imminent demise of Calaria. Those These doomsayers scor, uh, scorn the gods with their words and demand that everyone bow down before the inevitable end. It sends the sectarian also on a suicide mission. What's my uh, military? I guess I can do that. Or my, my lowest rank is in the leadership. So I should probably select whatever gives me leadership experience. Silence the sectarians. Fed morale reduced. Recruitment growth for trainable units. Eh. Increases energy points. Yeah, let's silence them. Let's go for leadership experience. And decrease. Where is that? Skill, skill craftsmen can do some work on the real. Oh, okay. Rank up, right. Well, this one will be finished in one day, so we'll rank up after that. Right, and you guys probably should camp. Hmm. Oh, we don't have any more of this, huh? Okay. I wonder if I can buy it somewhere in town. Maybe. Hey, if something, I can actually take this uh, uh, first level of corruption. It's not awful. It's it's pretty bad, but it's not awful. Okay, then. Let's just begin resting, then. And let's go inside. Oh, right. I need to listen to these conversations here. Yeah. And I, th I still think even with... Uh... Hmm, but yeah, I, I will have to visit quite a few of these areas, so... I'm not sure if I'll be able to live here without corruption. I might, though. Oh, what is that? A reducing streak, a streak appears in the... Bill, Billow's violet sky above the, the deserted lands. The streak, streaks are not like an ordinary Gal Galarian rainbow. They look more like oil dropped in water. The sweltering haze in the sky seems to water uh, to water along with the streaks. Time and time again, one of the commander's party spots some movement out of the corner of their eyes, and. Reaches for the weapons, only to immediately realize they were mistaken. The ground underfoot turns into a muddy gray, covered in covered in dense layers of ash expected, expelled by gazers. Curious natural phenomena, not uncommon in these parts. In in the distance, burrows can be seen, uh, appearing only as a vague piles of rocks in the haze. The wind whips clouds uh, of ash into the face of Commander's party. Along with the ash, the wind ushers in ragged grey clouds that uh, shroud the sky. The giant eye in the cloud, unblinking, watches Commander and, the, and his party from above. One can only imagine how insignificant the creatures struggling across the, la the land must seem to such a, from such a height. In, in a break in the clouds, the white of the sky, uh, sky's eyes, eye pulse, pulses ready to burst like a boil. The dark clouds of the pupil grow blacker still. Commander decides to study the shape of the clouds more closely. Yes. Ash observes uh, that in his in this wind, the ordinary storm cloud could not coalesce uh, into clear shapes. The air throbs with peril. This is no m mere storm. What's brewing is someone, uh, something brought by the abyss and possible only in the wound. Mm, so we'll have to roll nine. Mobility. Make for the barrows. The mm. well, trying to call anything about that. No. Well. Let's try to get there then. Come on, roll high. Good. Living creatures can be beaten, but one can conquer. 
cannot conquer a force of nature. The commander decides to run for cover. The party manages to reach the barrows before the storm swells to its full force. Something suddenly drops from the sky, landing with a splat at the commander's feet like an overripe fruit. It is a it is white about the size of chestnut. It it has dark center and uh, the longer the commander stares at it, the more it seems like something is staring back. The fruit looks disturbingly like an eyeball. Training eyeballs. Uh, the whirlwind of the of ash stops uh, the party from looking up to see what what is happening in the skies. Perhaps a carrion bird was transporting its already rotting price home. At least that's what all companions are hoping as they cluster around the milky white eyeball. The second eyeball lands nearby with an unpleasant squish, uh, leaving only a bloody splash on the ash-covered ground. Two eyeballs cannot be a coincidence. The looming rocky ledges, which give the barrow an appear the appearance of a hill, look like they could come crashing down the on the party heads at any moment. However, they do not offer protection. They do offer protection from the storm. The horrific hail misses the party almost entirely, and eyeballs land around them in wet cacophony. Okay. Land around the barrels looks more like a dumping ground than a burial ground. The storm have bleached skulls and bones, rusted armor, and dented swords. This is familiar sight. More surprising are the arms and legs of golems scattered around the waist, uh, the ones snarling faces of animals and uh, that now lack all resemb resemblance of their living brethren. Things that look like a horse carcass but with broken mechanical legs. Everything is br brown with rust and long forgotten. A battle was fought here once. Uh, though the vial of ash, uh, the, through the vial of ash, the party struggles to find the entrance to the burrow. Uh, remembering everything. Okay, knowledge arcana. Who has? Oh yeah, this is this can't fail. This can't fail too. Well, let's let's use uh, her. Ember senses the entrance of generations upon generations of Sarkorians performing rituals between the uh, between inside of the bu the burial mounds to grant their ancestor peaceful slumber. The magical signature un un unerringly leads her to the entrance. An ash darkened piece uh, of casing that covers its it crumbles under the slightest pressure. The mouth of the barrel is cool and smells of damp dust. More of the ash lines underfoot pressed into the glossy slippery crust. It is clear that the barrow has been constructed above the uh, cave system. Uh, the, deliber the deliberately covered, uh, carved out corridors stretching in off into the barrow. barrow's depth leave room for natural passageway. The wind wailing through the st uh, stalactites in the dark carries strange sounds similar to desperate human cry. Help me, help me! The party strains to hear and decides to. Uh, that probably will not succeed, but let's let's give it a try. Yes. Well, let's go towards the voice. What can possibly go wrong? It's, it's most likely some sort of magical creature that uh, tries to lure us in. Hagler cannot ignore cries for help, and the party rushes towards the sound, frequently looking around for en enemies or traps. A strange thing. The closer they get to the voice, the less distinct the police become. Bur blurring into the grinding screech of a nasty mechanism. The only passage leading further into the barrel finishes in a dead end, a spacious cave, its walls decorated in f ferocious uh, frescoes, oh, frescoes that have almost entirely faded over time. Before the companions have a chance to decide whether to look for a door or turn back, the cave floor, which seems solid uh, with well tottered, tottered ash vibrates and begins to ripple like water. One after another, commander's companions are sucked into thick ashy mass like they have stepped into a quicksand. And perception probably will be our best choice. Party needs to assess the situation. 
The party understands that panicking is pointless, assessing the situation and formulating a plan of action is more useful. When when they stop struggling, they notice the quick uh, the quick clash seems to quick ah oh, quick clash seems to loosen it, its grip in turn. Below, they can hear strange noises like grinding metal. Could there be a mechanism drawing the quick ash downward? The exit from the cave is still too high, and now the party will have only one route out down. Um. Well, let's try to to run for the exit, or do we just go in? Let Let's try it. The party floats in the quick ash like in water and manages to s uh, slow their sinking with precise measured movements. They maintain their composure, giving them time to think about what ne to do next. Uh, well, I guess we're just going down to go down anyways, right? Since the... Okay. The quagmire res uh, resistance vanishes as expected. The commander opens his eyes sensing that he is in the freefall. Through the gloom he sees a, s a spear sticking out of the panel to the ground uh, and he manages to grab hold of the wood and hangs suspended from it. Suddenly everything jolts into action. Dozens of daggers, saws, swords and spears uh, spring out from all sides, whistling through the air, but this is no enemy ambush. The weapons are being ba uh, Brandished by the pistons and loudly spraying gears of giant mechanism. The spear that saved the commander was also rusted in the in its piston that it is no it is no longer able to move. The party has found itself in the heart of a giant metal flower growing up. How does look? Okay, I guess. But isn't it too small? The party found itself in the heart of the giant metal flower growing up out of the ashy quagmire covering the floor. The Uranag, built by the forces of Abyss, tries to close its petals, crushing, crushing, mashing and cutting its victims to pieces. But years of laying dormant in the darkness have taken their toll. It's uh, articulations move with soul-shuddering screech and become easily jammed. The mummified bodies of unlucky crusaders can still be seen hanging uh, spread on rushed blades, rusted blades. If commander wants to avoid this, their fate, he figure out what makes the Uranag move. Even the magical mechanism is still a mechanism. From above, the commander has a good view of Uranag's inner working. Large tooth wheels are sent into motion by gear shafts. It all becomes clear. If the gear shafts can be jammed, the movement will stop. The commander is almost out of time. Another few minutes and it will all be over. Realizing that simple uh, escape isn't possible, the commander decides to try to jam Urnak's main mechanism in the heart of the flower. He looks around for something sturdy and finds... Uh, a staff of the dead monk? Mm, hammer of the in the hands of the dead paladin, maybe? I don't know. Commander is almost out of time. Another few minutes and it will all be over. Realizing that... Sim oh, right. The body of a paladin uh, clutching a warhammer in his hands of bone hangs from the Unag's hammers from one of the Unag's hammers pointing directly upward. The commander is lucky that the warrior chose to meet his death with weapon in hand. The commander drags the body towards him and grabs the hammer, but the servant of uh, light's grip is still surprisingly strong and refuses to relinquish the weapon. The bone arms are easily ripped from the skeleton's shoulders, still holding the hammer. Commander tosses the lot into the heart of the Uranag. The hammer falls, sparking, uh, sparking of gears and getting stuck beneath, be between them. With a furious screeching and scrapping, the Uranag tries to grind up the hammer, but it cannot. A tremor travels up the 
are the pedals. Uh, there, there is a deafening cracking sound and the Urnak still, Urnak uh, stills forever. After carefully extracting themselves from the clutches of the broken Urnak, the commander and his party find themselves up to their knees in ashy sludge once more. But this time it only harmlessly uh, squelches under their feet as they walk. A dark breach yawns for, for them and they cry the commanders and they, the cry the commander heard at the entrance uh, to the burrow rises up again. Help me, since there is no other route, the commander decides to... Uh, well, see if there's anything valuable, probably. Fencer's gift. What is Fencer's gift? Right. The commander uh, searches the Crusader's body. Uh, what, the dead, uh, what the dead no longer need may prove useful for the living. Fortune smiles on him. The party will be leaving the Urnak cave richer than uh, when, it, when it went in. After all, uh, all its ordeals, the party finally goes up to the surface and emerges in a small chamber. Pipes protrude from numerous openings um, dotted all over the walls, and, and they connect to a small box adorned with the Baphomet symbol. The box cries out, protrude, uh, producing high plaintive noise that then carried through the pipes begin to sound something like help me. The commander knows that uh, this is just another demonic mechanism cre created to lure crusaders into the barrel. He smashes the box, scattering small bolts and gears across the rooms. The room silent reigns. There is no secrets left in this place now. Cool. That was fun. What did we get? Spencer's gloves. Plus your damage bonus. <coughs> This glove grant plus 3 we uh, to the second weapon when dual wielding, or wielding a uh, two-handed weapon. Oh, if the wearer has a weapon training ability and is wielding a weapon, gives bonus increase. So, wait a second, if I... What am I wearing now, by the way? Bonus to persuasion, skills to make to intimidate. Addition when the wearer of this glove confirms a critical hold the minion suffer most. Oh, that, that's not that useful. Yes, it does increase me. Because I'm wearing the two hand. I, I thought it would be like only. Okay, cool. Uh, how about. Weapon training ability and is wielding weapon gives a. Hmm? What's a weapon training ability? I don't know. But, anyways, I think I'll make a cut uh, here and we'll continue in the next episode. We'll probably we'll get to Burn Down Shack and on its way we're gonna also visit Ravaged Longhouse and then we'll see. We'll probably will get to Desolate Hovel. I'm, I'm willing to take the, uh, the, the hit. There are a few also other things here. Okay, yeah, that, that's what we'll do. So, 